Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Now let's go back uh, a little while ago in history to the year 2014. And the story I'm sharing this morning is something that you may have heard a lot of times. Um, on this day, uh, of course, uh, there were uh, claims of about 58 billion naira that was traced to numerous accounts of, or Nigerian government money that was traced to numerous accounts um, across the country mm -hmm. that the government, of course, at that time said, you know, they were going to, you know, retrieve and, you know, put back into the economy. It was on this day the Ministry of Finance announced that it had traced about 58 billion unremitted uh, revenue of the federal government to various bank accounts. It said the funds were hidden by unscrupulous bank managers and collaborators in ministries, departments, and agencies. Uh, back then, the coordinating minister for uh, the economy and minister of finance, Dr. Ungozio Konje Wela in Abuja, threatened heavy sanctions, including closure of such accounts against the culprits by, of course, the next week, if all of such monies were not paid into the Consolidated Revenue Fund of the federal government. She said in a statement that the practice through which government officials place government revenue in their illegal accounts to earn interest for their pockets was unacceptable and must be stopped. Uh, starting, of course, on, on the 17th of June, the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation, in, of course, exercise of its powers, um, you know, threatened that it will close those bank accounts of the agencies involved in this practice um, in all banks across the country at that time. So um, 58 billion, you know, as it was uh, declared, uh, was found missing. If you remember, a couple of years later, in 2017, there was the ECOE gate, where about 13 billion naira was found, of course, in naira and in dollars, euros, pounds, any currency you can imagine, was found in an apartment uh, somewhere in ECOE. Um, that's just a, 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 another example. And um, it's not very long ago, I'm not sure what year this was, but there was a conversation by Abdul Rashid Maina. Um, it was on a phone call with... Uh, this guy who was the, the radio guy who was slapping people left and right. Yes. Left and right. He did it just once, <laughs> as much as we know. Well, <laughs> so, um, in a conversation with him, you know, on, on, um, on that radio show, um, Abdul Rashid Maina had claimed that, you know, if the Nigerian government would just let him, um, you know, come back into the country and, oh, he wasn't contracted uh, then. So if the Nigerian government would let him, you know, he would prove that he didn't steal any money. And it would also show where, you know, accounts across the country where there's billions and billions of Naira um, that have, you know, continued to accrue, you know, over years um, that there are government funds, you know, that people create these false bank accounts and, you know, continue to start billions of Naira every year. The, the money continues to generate in interest. Um, and it has been happening for many, many years that he's aware of. Um, so there's been multiple of these type of claims, you know, here and there. Um, but, of course, the question, you know, Nigerians have continued to ask is, you know, have these funds been retrieved? Um, mm. What have they been used for even after being retrieved? The EFCC chairman, former EFCC chairman, you know, made claims about billions of naira or so that had been retrieved, you know, by the current administration, you know, in the last couple of years. But um, once again, you know, where are all these funds? Did Ungozi uh, Okonje, well, at that time, you know, was she successful in retrieving that 58 billion? Um, if yes, then, you know, what was the money eventually used for? Um, many times I always talk about the, the Auditor General of Federation and how we have very, very poor auditing with a lot of money that goes through our system here in Nigeria on the federal level and on the state level. There's almost zero auditing, you know, and you will never be able to really, really vouch for any of these MDAs or any of these, you know, government agencies and say, okay, yes, every single penny that got you know, sent to them was properly utilized and these are the excesses or these are, you know, the, you know, um, whatever it is that is the balance of the amount of money that was allocated to them. Um, you just hear that 100 billion was given to this agency and that's it, you know, that it's a wrap, you know. Um, so it's a place that we need to do better. Um, but on this day in 2014, 58 billion naira was declared to have been traced to unscrupulous bank accounts across the country. You see, I find it very hard to wrap my head around the fact that millions and bi millions, billions of Naira has been stolen almost every day by politicians. They're super rich, super wealthy, yet they steal public funds. And on the other side of the coin, you find the poorest of the poor in Nigeria. So how do we just oppose corruption, stealing of public funds in their billions? Yeah. And then, Poverty. It's 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 um. So it's, it's, it is the 
the How effect do you juggle of having that? it's the it's what you get when you have um, very very poor institutions and very poor processes. So when you have those institutions, there's avenues for leakage of government funds here and there um, from every agency that you can imagine, even JAM. <laughs> that should really just be setting exams. Um, there is avenues through you which hear billions, billions of naira, of naira for, can just for for question papers to print question paper. Billions of naira to buy pencil everywhere. Customs to buy immigration, even on the state level. There's a friend of mine who did you know auditing for a particular state in Southwest some time ago, and just was sharing how much billions keep getting missing every day. And the stupid part is, whenever a governor decides, okay, I'm going to change the processes through which we get in government funds, I remove all these touts from the streets who are basically just stealing money from the government, he eventually is kicked out because the people say that he's taking food from their mouth. Um, but that's, you know, the, that's the Nigerian story. And it hasn't changed. Let's not deceive so, ourselves. So, re really, when we talk about Nigeria running into debt, you know, and, and things like this, I really ask myself if we can actually check these processes by yeah. which money is stolen in Nigeria, would we still have this problem? No, very likely not. We would be able to save billions and billions and billions every year um, if, if we simply had better institutions and better processes uh, through which uh, money was made and you know, spent. But we don't, sadly. Still about the economy, on this day in history, June 14, 2012, Nigeria's uh, Okonjo Wela, she, she, she put out a warning. Uh, she was a former Minister of Finance. Uh, she was also Coordinating Minister for the Economy, uh, Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Wela. She warned that there was a difficult time ahead for Nigeria. And she was saying this to the Federal Executive Council during the meeting in Abuja, asking the government to buckle up and prepare for a possible recession in the economy. She gave this warning, and this was coming on the heels of a new visa regime by the federal government. <clears throat> and this new visa regime uh, stipulated that foreigners would come into the country without you know, needing to go through all those visa processes, come into the country and get visa on arrival, seeing it to open up investment opportunities, and they would try for it not to jeopardize our national security here and there. So she just went on to talk about the dire economic situation that Nigeria was facing and that we needed to buckle up and prepare for a possible recession. So this was what happened. She talked about the weakness, the signs of weaknesses in the Nigerian economy, talked about unemployment, the lack of tourism, you know, terrorism. She just mentioned all these challenges at that meeting on this day in history, you know, the Federal Executive Council, telling them about the possibility that Nigeria was going to get into recession. And uh, true to her words, we did see that recession, even though it wasn't immediate. We saw a recession in 2016. We saw another one in 2020. And we know that um, this is basically because of falling crude oil prices, still lending voice and cause to the calls for Nigeria to move our economy from a mono-economic situation of you know heavy dependence and reliance on oil to a diverse economy, you know, looking into agriculture, telecoms, you know, tourism, and so many other parts of our economy. So it was in this day in history that Okonjo Iwela put out this warning. Crazy how she is. She features in these two. Um, you know, stories that we're yeah. hearing this morning, you know, from 2012 and also 2014, 2014. you know, and, um, uh, you know, she was also praised, you know, because of these statements that she made back then, you know, and then there's also people who criticized the government back then, you know, for not doing enough to prevent us from getting into, you know, recession, which eventually we got into later, you know, after they had left, you know, office. She currently, of course, heads the World Trade Organization. Um, there has been for the longest time, uh, conversations about uh, diversifying our economy and moving us away from just you know over reliance on oil, you know, getting into agriculture, and that's one of the things that the current administration had um, spoken a lot about and promised that we're going to be able to achieve, you know, when they come, came to power, you know, in 2015. But uh, we don't seem to have done very well with regards to that, you know, and you know we're still very very heavily dependent on oil. Um, the agricultural sector that you know many have said that we should move into has not done. It doesn't seem to have done very well. Um, and also, how much attention have we placed into actually funding agriculture and ensuring that farmers can go to uh, to the farms? You know, and um, you know, you know, removing the security you know uh, challenge that has also affected our agricultural um, uh, growth in the last couple of years. We've we've not, in, in my opinion, we've not done very very well. We've actually done very very poorly, and we still have, are very very reliant on oil. Um, that we're not sure how much longer we will um, um, survive. But um, hopefully at some point we actually get to experience this 
talk of diversifying our economy. Mm. We yes. said it for so long. When the right people come into power, like technocrats, people who truly have a vision for yeah. what the country should look like. And that's why, you know, people look at things like this and they say they're going to be out on the street to talk about the vision that MK Abiola had for Nigeria. If you remember the campaign promises of 1993, it's, it's, like, it's, it's almost as though he was campaigning for president in 2020, 2020 in 2021 yeah. because we still have those challenges, still have challenges of power, no lights, no food, no water, no, you know, talked about how people are earning so little and yet it's transportation that gobs the bulk of their salary. Ask any Nigerian yeah. youth, you know, in their early 20s, you know, and above, they tell you that the bulk of their transportation, the bulk of their salary goes into transportation. So there's challenges with us there. He says, hope 93. You know, it's just, it's just a lot. It's just a lot. Yeah. We, need, we need something. We need, we need yeah. new sets of leaders come to between three people who would look at the country and, you know, be able to bring the vision that they have for the country into fruition. And even if it's not agriculture, you know, how far, how well have we done with, you know, information technology? Exactly. How well have we done with, you know, science and technology generally, you know, in the last couple of years? We've, we've, we've really, I don't know what we've really, really done, you know, with regards to diversifying our economy. Um, we're currently having conversations about a ban on Twitter. Um, we're currently, of course, having, you know, conversations, and it seems like the government is not very, very keen on, you know, science and technology and IT and, you know, and, and, really, and, really and that's that where the revolution is. That's where the industrial revolution begins, yeah. you know. But anyway, um, that's what happened today in history. Okonjo Iweala 2012 um, gave a warning at the Federal um, Economic Council telling the Nigerian government to buckle up for a possible recession. And of course, in 2014, once again, Okonjo Iweala. Stay with us. Uh, our first major conversation this morning is talking about protesting. Uh, a few days ago, um, uh, we, of course, had another you know, a chaotic scene across uh, states in Nigeria. And uh, we're going to have a discussion this morning on the rights to protest and the process, really, of protesting here in Nigeria. We'll get into that right after the short break.